everyone, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my channel. And today we'll be reading some of the best historical romances. It's Brittany, bitch. These are the best historical romances only because I actually found a article online that listed out a whole bunch of these as the best. And I picked a couple of these from the list because I was really feeling historical romance, but I feel like I don't get a whole lot of recommendations from people for historical romances. Or if I do, they kind of sound very similar to one another. So I did want to find some that were a little bit different or kind of caught my eye. And I did pick three and I did find all of them on audio already. So I am pretty much ready to go with these and I'll probably start reading them as soon as possible. The first one is by an author I've always wanted to try and it is Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins. Now this book sounds so interesting. It's part of an Old West series and I love that time period. So I'm just very excited for this book overall. I just feel like it naturally already has like three to four stars going for it just based on the setting and the premise. This story takes place a few years after the Civil War and we have our hero and a heroine. So Ryan is our hero and he's actually white passing even though he was born a slave and now he's a very influential man in town. And then insert Edie who is our heroine in this story and she's traveling to California out west and she gets stuck in this Nevada town where Ryan happens to be. And obviously a romance ensues but it's forbidden because he is trying to continue to be white passing and Edie is black. So he's engaged to a white woman and is supposed to marry her and nobody in this town knows that he was actually born from a slave. So it's a very interesting premise and also I just love the, the out west thing. I just love books in that setting and you think I would pick up more like westerns but I just don't ever really see them or maybe I'm just not following the right people but I'm really excited for this book and it's probably the first one I'm to get into just because it's so different than anything I've read maybe ever. The next book I'll be reading is by Tessa Dare and it's called Romancing the Duke. So in this one we have our main character Izzy who has bequeathed the castle and then when she arrives there's a blind duke who says like hey I own this castle and she was like well it was given to me so you need to leave. I don't know a whole lot about this story just because there isn't really a whole lot of information about it. There's not like a really good synopsis that explains the whole thing. I kind of had to read some reviews to even find out uh, the name of our hero which is Ransom. So it was between Izzy and Ransom and obviously there is a love story and apparently there's a big like gothic castle atmosphere which I am super into. Uh, I really especially like you know in the fall time I really get into like the whole gothic vibe in general and the thought of a gothic castle romance just sounds <laughs> chef's kiss. The next one I'll be reading is Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Kleypas and this book is about Amelia and Cam and Amelia is already taking care of her brothers and sisters and she receives a surprise inheritance so she can finally be elevated in a London social class and I believe she kind of is falling for Cam who is more of a self-made man and I don't think he's in London society and that's all I really know about this book. I want to go into these with, with knowing as least amount as possible especially for romances I don't really want to spoil anything because there's not always a whole lot of like plot in romances but I'm really excited for all of these and I'll probably get to them um, starting a little bit later next week. But I'm definitely going to start with Forbidden first just because it sounds the most intriguing and interesting and different than anything I've read in like the past few years in terms of historical romances. So I'll definitely be picking that one first. All right, listen up. I did finish Forbidden yesterday and I think we get Forbidden four stars. I actually really enjoyed this and I think there was a lot of things going for this, but there was definitely a few things going against it that I didn't love. The Old West setting was fucking incredible. It was very visceral. I just, not that I'd ever like want to live in that time period, but like experiencing it, especially like a good spot for a romance. I just feel like it's the perfect, it's the perfect spot for like some raunchy sex. Uh, didn't get as much sex as I wanted uh, at all, but it really had the opportunity because there's even like whorehouses and saloons and shootouts and cowboys and sheriffs and I just like really love that part of it to be honest. Also the racial tension was done incredibly well on this book between the black people who are now freed and the white people who have no idea what the fuck to do anymore because they only knew how to deal with black people usually in terms of them being slaves instead of them actually being their own free people and like owning businesses and stuff. It's very interesting to see that racial dynamic but it's done so well. And on top of that the history of the time was done really well too and it wasn't thrown in your face. 
I feel like I actually learned things or like historical events lined up in a really natural way that made sense for this book but I didn't feel like it was being shoved down my throat the entire time and this was like a historical like romance. It just felt really natural for the plot and it helped me have a better understanding of the novel as a whole. I also really enjoyed the characters separately like as individuals I really booted for them and I was really helping for them to like get what they wanted and achieve their dreams. I also really loved the consent during this and no matter what the plot was like very strong and each character had like their own friends and enemies and it just it worked. However I did not feel the romance between these characters. I wasn't rooting for them as a couple whatsoever. It was very frustrating because I was expecting more of a romance out of this and it didn't scratch that romance itch and there wasn't really a whole lot of sex. I mean this was almost too slow of a burn for me to be invested but I think part of it was this is the perfect setting to be kind of raunchy or like have behind the scenes like dirty dusty sex. I just feel like they didn't use that to the advantage. Jenkins did not take advantage of that at all. I was also really frustrated that we have like this buildup of penetrative sex and it never we never get to like see that moment or like experience it the same way that we could have with other scenes um because you know at the ending when they have their wedding night yada yada. I was just expecting that penetrative sex they talked about but didn't happen. Um, it was very glossed over and I'm very upset. Especially for how like little sexual tension was built up in the book. I was really hoping for like an explosive ending, pun intended, but it was just very, not fade to black. It just wasn't as descriptive or like a graphic sex scene that as I was hoping for, especially like given the circumstances that like now they were able to do that. On top of that, I did not like that it was like the experienced man slash aversion trope. I just don't like that. I don't like that in any book. It just really bothers me. And I don't really know if I like the way it was done here at all, but I also just don't like the trope. So don't know if that's really fair to like judge because I just don't like it. I also did not like how the sex work were quite demonized even though it's kind of their only option at the time especially a lot of the free black women didn't really have any other options did not like that at all and then the other thing I really didn't like was the ending there's a villain who kind of came out of nowhere and I really wish it was built up better throughout the book because the villains kind of cut out after like the 50% mark I would say like it's not really like a big part of the whole thing and it just came out of butt fuck nowhere and it was really annoying it just felt like a plot piece to like have an exciting ending and it just didn't actually do anything for me it didn't really add to the plot it didn't really make a lot of sense I would have been a lot more comfortable if it would have been built up because I'm not like against it happening that ending could have happened for sure if there was just like some build up or like more tension or like he was getting like threatening notes or something that would have made more sense for that to happen. So that's pretty much my breakdown of how I feel about Forbidden. I really enjoyed it. I definitely would read more from Beverly Jenkins in the future. Um, maybe I'll just continue on the series. Maybe if I'm feeling some Old West deliciousness, I will go ahead and do that. Um, but I definitely would read from her in the future for sure. Now onto the next one, which I already started, which is Romancing with Duke. And I'm surprisingly 80% of the way into this book. I didn't really expect to happen that way, but I didn't get a chance to talk to you guys earlier before I was around 50%. But <laughs> listen, this is my first Tessa Dare ever. And I've seen a lot of people say that Tessa Dare is very easy to read. And I would 100% agree, even just listening to the audiobook, I'm really enjoying the story. It makes sense. I can picture it. Um, I don't feel like there's a disconnect there. The problem with this story, I did not realize this was the fucking Beauty and the Beast retelling. I hate retellings. If you know me, you know I don't like retellings and I fucking hate Beauty and the Beast retellings. And I think maybe the reason why is because it's so overdone. Like I feel like if it's the one fairy tale that everybody fucking wants to redo, even though I have no idea why it's so fucking appealing. I just also don't like the whole scarred man like trope and a woman fixing him. I just, I don't like that trope at all. I don't like it. I don't like the story. I don't like Beauty and the Beast really period, even though that was the best theater show I've ever seen in my life. I'm gonna tell you right now, but like as a book or as a story idea, I just don't really care for it like whatsoever. I realized it probably around like the 15 and 20 percent mark and I was like this is dead ass of Beauty and the Beast retelling but I don't think a lot of people know that because it has more of a unique plot like a lot of people are like oh this story is so unique and I'm like it's unique because she's taking a trope and subverting a lot of them like the beauty in the story isn't beautiful she doesn't think she's beautiful she has frizzy curly hair she's like a little offended that's fine even though she's probably not ugly by any means she feels plain she doesn't feel beautiful um a lot of people don't say she's like gorgeous or anything so there's there's a difference her dad instead of being like an inventor he was like a famous author who made a story with like her as like the main character not like an Alice in Wonderland thing but it sounds kind of fantastical romance etc and it seems like she was a big character in that and her father is dead and left her penniless basically because he left like all his money to his heir which is like her cousin who's a piece of shit and obviously the same tropes around the guy exist his name is Ransom he's a beast he has a giant scar across his face and he's mostly blind from this accident where he was like having a sword duel or whatever he's holding himself away in his fucking castle for like eight seven eight months now and hasn't been in London society he sent away all his servants his servants just want to serve people 
I just somehow people didn't see that this was a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Maybe they just didn't care. But for me, like, I fucking hate this so much. It's the reason why I don't like a lot of novels. It's not like this is a bad novel at all, but it's 100% a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's just a little bit differently and I can appreciate some of like the, number one, the raunchy sex scenes are fantastic. Love that. I really like her writing as well. I just don't like they're using this fucking retelling. I don't like it at all. I feel like such a bitch, but I just, I absolutely hate them with a fucking passion. If you're a therapist, please look into this and find out why I hate them so much. But like, if there's one retelling in the world that I fucking hate is this. So I'm 80% of the way into this. It's not bad by any means, but I just can't say any past what it is. I can't look deeper into the story just because I know what it's retelling. I know how it's gonna end. I don't like that story to begin with. It's not like it's like a little mermaid or something. Cause I feel like I never read like the little mermaid or like a Pocahontas or whatever the fuck it is. I feel like I don't read those kind of stories. I just feel like it's always beautiful the beast and why do I always find myself like somehow picking these fucking books I just don't know I'm just mad I'm gonna finish it hopefully tomorrow I only have like an hour and a half left or I might listen to it a little bit when I'm making dinner in just a minute depending on how I feel about it I could finish it maybe today I don't know but I'm just letting you know I'm upset like the book is not bad but I'm just upset but I definitely would read more from Tessa Dare in the future I just I, I feel like I need to do better research but at the same time I can't find anything about this being a retelling like at all like a lot of them sometimes will say it in this fucking synopsis I can't find shit am I just not looking hard enough what is it also, this has that experienced man version trope. Don't like it at all. Like, I just... <sighs> anyway, I will talk to you guys whenever I finish Romancing the Duke, and then I'll get started on the next bad boy, and um, I'll give you guys an update tomorrow. Listen, my hair is quite a mess because I've been driving with the windows down because it is fucking gorgeous this morning. But I wanted to fill you in on our romances. So I did end up finishing Romancing the Duke and I think I'm just give this three stars. I just feel like that's probably the easiest rating for this. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the writing. I actually really loved Tessa Dare's writing. Like I definitely would try more from her, but I did not like that it was a retelling and that it was so close enough to the original that I obviously realized that. But I just hate Beauty of the Beast retellings. Like it was never like, anything above like like three or four stars ever but um I actually really enjoyed it it was really fun like if you're looking for like a really fun whimsical like kind of over the top romance like this is exactly what you're looking for and especially if you like retellings or especially Beauty and the Beast retelling specifically you're gonna really enjoy this however it's just not my thing I'm just not a fan, period. So did I overall enjoy it? Yes. Would I continue on the series? I guess so. I will research the series and I'm gonna see if all of them are retellings because if they all are I just don't know but I really loved her writing. So was it successful? Yes, because I did find a new author. I really enjoyed the writing. But um, overall, I really did enjoy the cosplaying and stuff, though. I thought that was really fun and different and just kind of gave it something I haven't seen before. I've never seen that in a romance, so I really enjoyed that. But overall, I just feel like three stars is probably just like the right rating for me because it just that's just kind of how it worked out. And I have started Mine Till Midnight, and I really don't know how I feel about this book. This one's by Lisa Kleypas, which I don't think I've actually ever read anything by her at all either. I don't know if I'm connecting with her writing as much as I was with Tessa Dare writing but I think the problem too is I do not like the narrator and I cannot find this on like in a book format so I can't really like see if maybe I like her writing I just hate the narrator because she sounds way older than the main character and I really hate that in novels like if this was Bridgerton and she was reading like Lady Whistledown's voice perfect she sounds honest to god like cousin Isabel or Mrs. Crawley from um Downton Abbey and I love that voice and I like her voice it's just for narrating the story it just does not work for me because she is so much older sounding than our main character and then, I mean it's not that, like they have to sound exactly the same age I just want to like feel believable like if it was be like a really fun romance I don't know maybe that's like a thing like I just I haven't been in the romance community like as an adult for very long so I just don't really know if this is like a thing like a lot of like older women just tend to narrate these audiobooks or like what like I really just don't know if it's just me or if I'm just having a hard time with the narration. I just feel like this book isn't hitting the way it should and it's not like it's bad by any means. Like I like the idea of this book. So we have our main character Amelia who has to basically take care of her family because her older brother Leo is like a piece of shit who doesn't take care of the family at all and he's like alcoholic, drug addict, like just he's living it up in brothels and shit and she's trying to take care of the fucking family. So in this we're following Amelia and Cam's love story. So she meets Cam and Cam is being Amelia and her family and connecting with them and falling in love with her. And he's just like all about her, which like in a lot of ways I can enjoy, but he's almost like too nice. Like it sounds really stupid, but I'm just not really connecting with their love story, even though I can feel some of their chemistry sometimes and other times I can't. But I think that could just be the narration. Like I think the problem is if you do not have a narrator you like, you will just automatically not like the audiobook as much at all. And the way she's narrating certain things, I just feel like it's very easy for me to like gloss over it or like 
I keep having to like go back and re-listen to something because I feel like I missed something because and again this could be Lisa Claypus' writing though is that sometimes I feel like we're in a scene that all of a sudden they're like having sex and I'm like when did this happen like why wasn't there like someone like just here like did I just miss that so I think it could be the writing I think it could be the narration I don't really know yet but I like like the Bridgerton feel of this I mean I never read Bridgerton I've watched the series but like a lot of people say that these are very similar series because there's a lot of like siblings and I like that feel and I know that I'm gonna really like the next romance if I do continue on because I do like those characters but I just don't know know like what I'm gonna feel about this like I just don't know if I'm gonna like rate it highly because I honestly feel like I actually almost enjoyed romancing the duke more because it was so fun and like almost like ridiculous and I kind of like I sometimes you like to hate something too like I was just like fuck this stupid book but I really enjoyed it but this one I feel like it just isn't connecting as much for me I feel like it's less memorable I don't know I I'll give you guys an update when I finish it I'm not that far from the end so hopefully I should get back to it in just a minute but I don't know let me know your thoughts on the below if um if you disagree with me so it's actually been a few weeks and i realized that i forgot to update you on mine till midnight because honestly this was just very forgettable i just feel like if i wouldn't have just looked at what their names were i would not have remembered anything about this book i do remember it now when i think about it but like otherwise i've not thought about it for about two weeks at this point so i'm gonna give this 2.5 stars which is surprising because i am gonna rate it lower than the beauty and the beast retelling that i don't like you can't always predict what you're going to like or not like and I was surprised at the fact that I rated this a little bit lower, but I think it was just based on enjoyability and I just didn't really love their romance. Now, would I read the second book in the series? Yes. I really like those two characters who I remember so much more vividly than our main characters of this book, which are Cam and Amelia. And the two main characters for the next book are going to be Mary Penn and Wynne, and they're just so much more like standout characters to me for some reason. I just don't really think I like Cam either. Like I really like Amelia as a character, trying to save her family, but Cam was just like very wishy-washy for me. And like I understand that he doesn't like accumulating a lot of wealth because him as a Rom, like they don't like to accumulate a lot of like material wealth, but like you can do so much good with that material wealth especially like you see in this book so I don't know that part was like just a little smidgy frustrating as someone who would like really love like random bags of money just coming to me at all points of the day not that that happened in this book but you know what I'm saying and lastly I just didn't love this book I will definitely attempt the second one but this was just so forgettable I really I literally forgot that I had not filmed like an ending to this reading vlog so I'm really sorry for that but it just happened and you know what I think a part of that was I didn't like the audiobook narrator and I'm gonna see if she like narrates the other ones or try to get them in like print format because her voice was just like not really doing it for me and I don't really know why it just didn't really work so anywho I've said all I can say about this and hopefully you enjoy this more than I did. Let me know if it gets even better in this series because I'm hoping that the second book is going to be really good because I really, really like those two characters. So let's just cross our fingers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys all very soon. Bye!